Hello everybody, welcome to my shop. My name is Randy Woods and today's video is all about this beer cap epoxy table. I've been wanting to get into uh, the epoxy pour uh, type projects, seems to be the, the thing these days. And so I was looking for a fairly easy project just to kind of get my feet wet. And uh, this, is, this is what I came up with. It was a lot of fun, it's, it's more like a weekend project. There's really not even a whole lot of woodworking involved. Uh, really it's uh, this piece of plywood that I put everything on and this uh, little uh, frame that I made out of uh, maple is really the only the only real woodworking. But I hope you get something out of this project. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into it. The legs I used for this project are just from an old table that I had laying around the house. Uh, I just repurposed it for this. Um, the mounting holes were a little bit small, so I had to, I had to drill those out so the, the bolts that I'm gonna use would fit. I'm gonna use threaded inserts as a means to secure this tabletop. Tabletop's just a scrap piece of uh, plywood. It's actually a piece of walnut plywood. And I just measured out for a three inch overhang. I marked my holes and then I used the appropriate size drill bit to drill for those uh, threaded inserts. I really prefer these threaded inserts that have the, the hex head on top. Uh, as opposed to the slot where you have to use a screwdriver. These just, uh, they're a lot easier to work with. I used a little bit of epoxy to hold those into place and then uh, my remaining epoxy, I used uh, that to secure the caps to the board. Now my original thought was to glue down all the caps and then rip cut the board, um, you know, really close to that last row of caps and then put the edge on. But uh, funny enough, these caps, it just, it came out perfect and I didn't have, I didn't have any excess board. I really like using my miter sled for this type of operation just because I can, I can really sneak up on uh, the perfect fit. I dressed these corners up a little bit with uh, some shop made wood putty if you're interested and how I make that, check out my shop made wood putty video. Since I'm only going to pour the epoxy on top of the table, um, I wanted to put something underneath to kind of give it a little bit of protection because this is going to be an outdoor table. Um, so I use spray paint. However, um, 
in hindsight, I would not have done this at this stage in the project. I would have saved it till the very end. I will explain why a little later. This brand of epoxy was recommended and I have no complaints. Probably the biggest challenge I'm, I'm, I find with this, uh, these epoxy pours is just trying to figure out how much epoxy to mix because the stuff's expensive and I don't want to waste any. And so uh, I think I mixed maybe a, maybe a cup and a half um, each pour. It's real, real simple, it's just a 50-50 mix. Now, using heat to get out the air bubbles, uh, this is where I messed up a little bit. Uh, not bad, but you can you can still see some some air bubbles in uh, the first uh, the first layer of epoxy I did. Uh, I worked it with the heat gun. I kind of got them out, and then I just walked away from them. And I should have just stayed there and and kept working it. I did realize my mistake uh, by that second pour. I did work those bubbles a lot longer this go round. So I thought I was done right here. I thought that was my final coat. But after the epoxy cured, I could see ripples across the top, so I decided to sand it down and give it another coat. You can tell right here as the epoxy cured that where the voids were, uh, the, the epoxy kind of shrunk. And that's what caused that ripple effect. Everything I've read basically said as long as you're doing the pours within so many hours of each other that there's no need to sand. Uh, if you let the epoxy completely cure, then you really need to sand to create that bonding surface. I've decided that I think it'll be best that anytime I do a, an epoxy project, I'm going to uh, go ahead and let the second to last coat uh, completely cure, then sand it down, and then do a real thin uh, final coat. And I think that's gonna, I think that's gonna give me the, the best results. I also learned that even though the the uh, the surface is level, um, it's really hard when you're pouring that on to get the uh, the epoxy to move over the entire board, so uh, this final coat, I used a, an old credit card to kinda to move the epoxy around. I was, I was very light-handed with that credit card. Um, I just kinda gently moved the epoxy around with it. Uh, so here we are at uh, sanding the bottom of this board. I, it just never, it never occurred to me that I was gonna have to do that. That's why I went ahead and painted the bottom of the board. Um, and now I'm having to come back and, and touch that up because I had to sand all that, all those drips off the bottom of the board. And yes, I could have removed the legs, but I found it uh, easier just to tape around them. Uh, in other words, I was being lazy. Overall, I'm happy with the result. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you give this a try. This project was a lot of fun. As always, if you uh, enjoyed this video, be sure to click on the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for all my future content. And also head on over to rkwoodsworking.com and check out all my other woodworking related content. And I hope to see you over there and we'll see you next time.